Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. Today is our lesson number 60. Lesson number 60. We're going to talk about a few words today, three or four words today, and all of these words, today's words, have to do with blood. Words have to do with blood. Having to do with Blood. Let's start with this word first. So So foie. The word is so foie. Now literally what it means is it has two parts to it. This first part that you see there is a French word for blood and second part here means cold. So so far means to have cold blood. Now listen very carefully. Uh, don't confuse don't confuse the meaning of this word here. To be to be cold-blooded in English language has a different meaning. If you're cold-blooded, that means you have no emotions, you have no sympathy, you have no, you're callous. Uh, to kill somebody in a cold-bloodedness means to kill somebody without any emotions, without any remorse, without any thinking about it. That's not what this word means. Here, when they say so far, as I, as I explained to you, so means blood. Foie is how the French would say cold. For example, if they want to say it's cold or it's hot, they would say il fait faux, il fait choix. Uh, il fait chaud, il fait froid. That's where this word comes from, froid. Son froid, which means cold blood. Now, when we say cold blood in this context, what it doesn't mean to be cold blooded. It simply means that you are cold blood because you are calm. To stay calm. You see, now when people get angry, people say, My blood is boiling. Well, your blood is not boiling, you're calm, you're collected. It means to not lose one's temper. It's a good thing I caught myself because in my notes, in my notes, this word I had spelled it as loose with two O's, as in not tight. I caught myself, I had to fix it here. It's a good thing I didn't actually put it on the blackboard with the word. Because like I have told you before many times, I don't mind I don't mind making a fool of myself in front of the camera, but there is a quota that I have to stick with every day and I don't want to go above that quota. And putting this word in place of that word would have put me above the quota of how much fool I want to make of myself in a given day. To stay calm, to not lose one's temper. To not get too excited about something. To keep one's composure. To not be Perturbed. We have learned this word perturbed, and if you want to learn it properly in more details, just type in Keshwani Prep Vocab D19 and you will learn the word perturbed. Perturbed means to be disturbed. Perturbed means everything that we see seeing here, it means not to be calm. Not to be calm, to lose one's temper, to be excited, to lose one's composure. That is called perturbed. Here, so far means that you are not perturbed. You are not disturbed, you are remaining calm, 
you're keeping your cool, if you if you want to say it in a colloquial sense, right? Oh, the word is still here from yesterday. Colloquial means informal speech. Informal speech. So if you want to put it in colloquial terms, to keep one school. That's how I believe that's how the kids talk on the street. To keep one school means not to get too excited, not to lose one's temper. And if that's the case, then you say that you have so far, you have cold blood. Not, colo not being cold blooded, as I explained already, it does not mean to be too cold blooded, it just means you're calm. So far. Let's learn the next word, which also has to do with the blood. All the words today have to do with the word blood, uh, with, the, with the blood. But I need the room, so I'm going to erase everything. So one more time, so far, to stay calm, to not lose one's temper, to not get too excited, to keep one's composure, to not be perturbed, and finally, to keep one's cool, so far. Next word also had, has the prefix of blood, and the word is sanguine. Here, interestingly enough, here, interestingly enough, the prefix so. That's how it's pronounced. So, the blood no longer is pronounced the way it is supposed to be pronounced. It has it, it, it has been mutated, and it is and now in this case it is for the word is pronounced sanguine, sanguine, sanguine. What does it mean to be sanguine? It's an adjective. It has two meanings. Literally. Literally, it means of of the color of the blood. If something is of the color of the blood, it is said to be sanguine. Or rather, or, or, or well, actually, that's not exactly right because you wouldn't describe something as being sanguine. It means to be ruddy, ruddy as in you have a rosy cheek. And when would somebody have a ruddy outlook, a ruddy look on their face, rosy cheek, all the blood that you see there? When would you have that? When the person is feeling, when the person is feeling cheerful, when the person is optimistic about about something, when some when the person is confident. So that's what the word means metaphorically. Metaphorically, sanguine means. You are cheerful, you are optimistic, you are rosy, you are cheer confident, you are rosy, if you like, which is again sort of a colloquial way of saying things. Rosy in the sense that uh, you are happy with yourself, you are confident, you are cheerful, so things are good, everything is going fine. And you feel sanguine, when everything is going, going well, you feel sanguine. Let's go to the next word, which also has to do with the blood, as I keep telling you. I need the room, so I need to read everything. So the word was sanguine. It's a shame that I have to keep erasing the words because I would like to keep all three of them on the blackboard so that we can make a contrast, comparison and contrast, but we, unfortunately we cannot do that. The board is not, uh, the size of the board does not allow me that luxury. Next word is sang -fi. Sanguinary. What does it mean to be sanguinary? Again, it has this prefix of so, the blood, as you can see here. But it's not pronounced so here, it will be sanguinary. What does it mean to be sanguinary? Sanguinary means to be
How do you spell thirsty? Thirst. Thirst. I S T. Blurred thirsty. But as I have said before many a times, do not depend on my spelling. I suck at spelling. I, I am not good at it at all. I misspell a lot of words. As a matter of fact, if you do not believe me, try asking me to spell, misspell, and I probably will misspell the word misspell. And that requires talent, you understand? So it means blood thirsty. Having to do with carnage. Carnage. You understand what carnage means? Carnage is a, uh, there's a lot of blood and a lot of chaos. Having to do with savagery. Savage. And finally, something that is gory. Something that is gory. Let's learn this word, gory. Again, it's an adjective. It means covered by gore. And what is a gore? Gore is another way of saying blood. So something that is completely covered by blood is said to be gory. Something that is bloody. Something that deals with something that deals with bloodshed and extreme violence. Something that deals with a lot of violence, something that's kind of covered, where you see the scenes with people lying on the ground, covered in blood, carnage, chaos, uh, horrible, grotesque thing, uh, scenes there. Something like that is said to be gory. It's called gory because it's covered with gore, covered with blood. Blood, uh, the word for blood is gore. Gory. And that's sanguine. Sanguinary. Sanguinary means if a person is feeling sanguinary, person is feeling bloodthirsty. They, they feel uh, rage in themselves. They feel bloodthirsty. They, they want to engage in carnage and violence. And such a person is called, said to be sanguinary, in a, in a sanguinary state of mind. The reason I wanted to cover this word sanguinary and sanguine is because, again, there has been times where I've seen the two words being misused. People mean to say, Sanguine, they feel sanguine, they feel optimistic, they feel happy, they feel, uh, they feel confident and they say that I, I feel sanguine, instead of sanguine, they end up using sanguinary, which is an entirely different word. It changes the meaning of the sentence, it changes the meaning of the whole thing. You don't want to feel, how, do you, uh, how did your interview go this morning when you went for a job interview? How, do you, how did the interview go? Well, I feel sanguinary. No, 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 no. Person does not feel sanguinary. Person is trying to tell you that they feel sanguine. They feel optimistic. They feel that they're going to get the job. They feel sanguine. They feel optimistic. They feel confident. They feel cheerful. They feel, they feel that it went very well. I feel sanguine about it. It was very, uh, it, it went very well. It may, I feel sanguine, not sanguinary. Sanguinary means that I feel bloodthirsty. I wanted to kill the interviewer. That's probably not what the word that's probably not what the person meant to say. They feel sanguine. That was the end of our lesson for today, day number 60. At the end of every five days, as you know, I give you a quiz, which means tomorrow is our quiz day. Tomorrow is our quiz number 12. And it'll be, the quiz is going to be based on all the words that we learned from day number 56 through 60. 56, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 60. Don't ask me why I had the urge to count it, but that's what it is. All right? So I'll see you tomorrow for the quiz, quiz number 12. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring, or tutoring over the internet via Skype, or any of these tests that you see there, GRE, GMAT, SAT, TOEFL, or even uh, algebra, geometry, statistics, uh, calculus, what have you, for any, of, any reason at all you wish to get hold of me, go to this website addresses that you see there, 
and send me an email. Or you can go to keshwaniprep.com and you can send me an email from there. Right? Thanks.